Good morning, everybody. Uh, today, we're just gonna get a good workout in. Let's get started with a little warm up. And I'd like you to, if you have the ability to, to have a band that you can lean into or you can use to step into like this, then I'd like you to start in that position. If you don't have a band, it's not that big of a deal. The only thing I want you to do in the different, differently than if you're in the band is just really focus on driving length and not trying to lean like we may be leaning into the band a little bit. Do you just focus on finding the length and following every cue I give just like where you were in the band, but just uh, don't worry about it if you don't have, have one. So you want to have some weights here. So something that kind of stresses you. Uh, the heaviest thing you probably have a set of, so you can have one in each hand. And we want the band to be right on our hip bones. And safely pick up your weight. And let's go ahead and just march it out. And as you're marching, I want you focusing on that length between your groin and really trying to push into the floor with each step. We don't want to just be loosely lifting our legs. We want to drive our energy down into the floor. We want our arms to be long by our sides, gripping the bells tightly, but making sure that we're really feeling the ribs anchoring down, the back of the neck up towards the ceiling, and those shoulders driving down towards the floor. About 10, let's go for about 10 more seconds and really focus on your breath and your posture, pulling those toes up without hiking your hips. And let's go ahead and rest. Put the bell down between your legs. And what I'd like you to do is turn around, step to either side of your bells, and you want the bell, I mean the band, you want the band right at the bottom of your butt. We don't want it at the top of your butt or even in the middle of your butt crack. We want right at the bottom of your butt crack. And as you step back into your position, make sure that in the beginning you keep your thumbs under the band just to make sure that as you push your butt back into the band, it doesn't move. If you've got a thicker band, odds are you don't have to keep your hands there for long, but if it feels like it's gonna slide and you're resisting anything in your hips, then go ahead and put your thumbs back there to hold it. So now, as you're going into these squats, I want your butt reaching back and down towards the wall and the floor behind you, pushing stretch into the band, and I want your chin gently tucked in and imagining that there's a bowl of slugs right underneath your face, and you're trying to keep your face or your chin from lifting up as you go back. Let's go two more and rest. And now, as we turn back around and we grab our weights again, we're gonna do the same walking set with the same intention of bringing that energy to your cores and driving length out of your legs into the floor. All right, let's go ahead and march it out again. Pulling the toes up, drifting the knees wide, but stepping narrow. We don't want a wide step here. We want a natural, narrow step. Drive your hip bones into the band. Drive your shoulders and hands down towards the floor. Anchor the ribs and the chin to the floor as the back of your neck tries to reach for the ceiling. Keep driving length out of your groin, down towards the floor, through the middle of your foot, and make sure the only thing lifted off the ground at the bottom is the arch. And let's go ahead and rest. Bring the weight down. And so now, we're gonna sit sideways into the band. Put the band right on your hip bone again. And all I want you to do is push your hip back and then come back in front. And if the band gets on the top side of your butt, bring it down to the bottom side of your butt cheek. It's still on your hip bone, but bottom half of your butt cheek. And I just want you to reach your butt back away from the camera and reach the back of your neck towards the ceiling above the camera. 
and let's go for five more. Driving length into the groin of the straight leg, pushing off, pushing both hips back and away, feeling no pinch, only length coming out of your groin. Give me one more. Feel your feet on the ground. They should be flat. There should be no lift of your toes, no heavy pressure on your heels, just equal pressure through your whole foot. Maybe on your, your straight leg. And then go ahead and come on up. Now, let's go one more set of marches and then we'll take care of the other side for those lunges. Let's go ahead and pick up your weight. Find your march. Squeeze the bell. Drive length through the groin all the way into the floor. Make sure your knee doesn't hold bend in it. We're not trying to lock your knee out. We're just trying to lengthen and push through the floor. The back of the neck reaching towards the ceiling as the shoulders and hands reach towards the floor. Ribs anchor down, chin anchor down without tension forming anywhere. Three, two, and rest. Set the weights down. Make sure they're enough out of the way so when you turn to the side, make sure we put the band on the bottom of the butt cheek, but up on the hip bone. And now let's push your butt back from that groin of the straight leg. And then come back up and push that straight leg groin, just push it back towards the back wall. Let the bending knee be loose and no tension behind the knee. And then come back up. Let's go two more. Pushing, energy hip is really pushing back and into the band. But the energy is being drawn out of pushing from that, that straightening leg. Good. And rest. So let's go ahead and come out of the band. And we're going to do a little drill that you need a smaller band for. I think the red one is a good one for most people, the yellow one too. I wouldn't go too heavy with your resistance on these in the beginning, but if this is not your first time, then maybe you want something a little bit heavier, but I would still stick with this one. Let's, uh, let's start and warm up with one foot inside the band. So that foot is inside it with the knuckle of the pinky toe and the knuckle of the big toe firmly placed on the band. And then the other foot is gonna step on top of the other end with the knuckle. But we don't want the pinky on this one, we just want the knuckle. So the band will kind of be right in the middle of that foot under the knuckle. And now step your foot a little wide and find the center. And all I wanna do for this first set is just do a couple squats making sure that you're drifting your knees wide but not turning them wide and you're anchoring all your core muster, muscles with ribs and, and shoulders anchoring down and back, chin and ribs anchoring from the front to push away from the slugs that might be in front of the chest or the chin. And just feel that you're not holding tension in your feet to try and stay on the band. You're allowing your weight to stay centered in your feet. And so let's do one more on this side. And then I wanna rest and switch it over to the other foot. And so when we're doing this other foot, same thing, we want the band firmly placed on the big toe knuckle and the pinky toe knuckle. We then wanna step the other foot, middle of the band, knuckle heavy on that band, and step wide. And so now as we go into this exact same set as last time, bring your attention to what you feel, not to where you go. I don't care how deep you go in the beginning. We're trying to push your hips back equally to how much the back of your neck reaches to the ceiling above the door in front of you. We want to make sure that we're focusing on the muscles, staying away from the slugs, and we're not using too much of our legs. We just want to feel that we're engaged through our cores and everything else, arms, legs, are trying to find the movement without holding any tension in them. So now that we've all warmed up the action, 
we're going to bring a little weight into it and we're going to do some shoot throughs. And so whatever weight you choose is fine, but if it's, we need a kettlebell for the shoot through. Um, and I, you want, if you've never done a shoot through before, then watch this one, just do regular squats. You don't have to do the shoot through, just learn it a little bit first. But if you've been doing shoot throughs for a while, you want to make sure you're not at your baby weight. Let's get up to something that is warming you up. We got two sets of these. So this one can be a little lighter than your next set, but make sure you're not starting with something too light. All right, so the same thing. I want you to put your band on your feet the same way we did the first time. So the first time we put that foot in, we put our knuckle down on the other side, we put a stretch on the band, and then we're gonna just safely pick our bell up and stand up tall. And so we're gonna do three squats, keeping that, that straight arm pinch into the dollar bills of our rib cage. And we just wanna push our hips back and remain on the band without letting it snap out of our big toe knuckle. Now, if it snaps out, just let it be. It's not worth changing when we have a weight in our hand, but it just tells you it's something you need to work on. And if you could do it fine with the, without the weight, but when you add weight, it changes, then that's something that you wanna work on. So let's go ahead and give me a couple shoot throughs and make sure that your explosiveness doesn't suffer, but you remain centered in your feet. Feel your arches lifting, but not letting that knuckle lift up. Relaxing your toes, making sure that they're not trying to lift or crunch to keep that position. And those of you who have a tendency to bicep curl or go too slow on the way down, remember we need to catch it in a long arm and avoid that bicep pull in. Last two. and set the weight down let your feet come out of the band and take a little break grab some water we're going to take a minute to recover on that one and we're going to grab a slightly lighter weight and so with this one we're going to work our balance and so as we're balancing a couple key factors need to play in we still want to keep our weight centered in the balls of our feet or in the middle of our feet. Heels should not be lifted, toes should not be lifted. And I want you to be focusing on the space coming from your pubic bone to your groin and down towards the floor. And so as we're balancing, we want to make sure we're kind of opening that and we're not holding any tension or pinching any legs across. We want to make sure that our first little set of balance without a bell is feeling that that back foot can even touch the ground a little bit in the beginning. And when it does lift, only lift at the height of your cell phone laying flat on the floor. And imagine that your cell phone is underneath that lifted foot. We don't want to squish your cell phone, but we do know that we don't want to pick this leg up really high because that's going to challenge our ability to hold that length and to not pinch in. And so let's go ahead and switch legs now and focus on that same thing. A little light touch on the lifted leg at first and then imagine it with your phone underneath it and the whole time trying to lengthen into the floor and create almost like a Y with your legs or a V or an A, whatever you want to think of, that kind of lengthens and, and reaches from the middle of the groin through the middles of the knees all the way down into the floor of your standing leg and feel how that allows you to have much better control of your balance. All right, so now we're gonna do the balance set. And I want you to find that same position. You've got a, a weight that you can circle slowly around your body. And as you're slowly circling that weight around your body, I want you focusing on the length, keeping those hips slightly in front of your ankle, trying to push length out of that groin into the middle of the foot, but lifting that arch and staying loose in our feet and now let's go ahead and switch directions remain on the same foot we've got about 10 more seconds keep your back of your your glute on your standing leg can be 
can be squeezing a bit, but make sure it's only to drive length into your groin and also to anchor into the abs. We never just want to grip that glute. And let's go ahead and rest. And we're going to do the other side next. Let's go ahead and balance, find that length, find the hips in front, feel the ribs and the shoulders anchoring to the floor as the back of the neck reaches up to the ceiling. And then let's go ahead and create that little circle around your body. If you're finding the need to touch your foot down a lot or you're having difficulty not having little moments where you're buckling in, then maybe you need to lighten up your weight a little bit. I find on this one sometimes the weight for somebody who's a beginner can kind of cause them to jump into muscles that are a little bit too reactionary. Let's go ahead and reverse your circles now. Feel that length that coming through the groin. Feel the hips in front of that ankle. Feel that back foot touching when it needs to, but just hovering over that phone, knowing it doesn't want to step on it hard. And let's go ahead and rest. And so now we're going to go back to our shoot throughs for our second set on the other foot. And yes, you have to kind of think here, what foot did you have in on the last one? So go ahead and take a second, put the opposite foot into the band, step the other foot with the band right in between the big toe knuckle and the pinky toe knuckle, and then put a little stretch on the band so you're standing upright with the weight in the middle of your feet. No more pressure on your heels than necessary. Let's go ahead and reach down. Safely push the bell away from the floor. Give your arms that nice long pinch into the ribs. And now push the hips back. Find your shoot through without losing the band. Without using too much bicep curl coming down. Really catching the band with your butt going back. And your arms pinching your sides and letting those elbows drive long rather than hold any tension trying to slow down the path of that bell. You gotta catch it at the bottom without slowing it down. Keep the ribs anchored at the bottom. Keep the chin in away from the slugs and make sure that you're keeping your chest open and not letting that bell pull your arms off of your ribs at the bottom. And let's go ahead and rest and let the band come undone and grab a little drink of water. So our next one, actually our next couple are for your toes. We wanna make sure that we're really activated and warmed up before we do these. And well, you could do them cold too. They are a form of warm up, but I prefer to be a little bit warmer when I do them. And so, you're going to get down onto your knees and if knees are in a comfortable position for you then that's okay you can take a little break here or do a plank onto a surface that's a good challenge hardest thing you do well make sure that you're not challenging yourself on the floor when you shouldn't be and make sure you're not giving yourself a baby position on a counter when you should be lower so let's go ahead on this one we want our knees pretty wide so the, uh, the contact on the ground is really with the middle edge of the kneecap rather than being on the kneecap itself. And so as we find this position, we want our toes to be tucked under so that you're on the pads of your toes. We do not want your, your toenails touching the ground. And so once you're here, we're gonna do one set without a weight to challenge, just to warm up. And I want you to feel again for that space going from your groin reaching down through your middle of your knee into the ground. We don't want to hold on with the back of our knees. We want to actually drive the energy through the floor as we go back. If we are scared and we protect and we hold tension in the knees, your knees won't like it. It won't be right. It'll be a waste of your time. And you're right. You, it's not good for you. So make sure that you feel that you're actively driving the length through the groin into the middle of the knee, through the floor, and always relaxing the area behind the back of the knee through the whole action. That is going to produce a big stretch into your feet. So make sure you know what you're expecting. We want to work your toes and your feet. And anybody with plantar fasciitis, this is for you. This is the only way you're going to get better. By protecting it and putting in things to keep you from moving your foot, 
that's not going to help. we got to get your foot active again. So as we're doing these now, if you'd like to hold a weight or if you'd like to have a band in your hands and go back, if you've done this before, that's perfectly acceptable. Some way to engage your abs and challenge a little bit harder. And on the first couple, you don't have to go as far back. But as you do your set, try and increase your distance a little bit more, but only with success through the cues. Don't try and get back further and fall out of what you know you should be doing to get there. All right, so let's go ahead and take your weight and hold it close to your chest. Don't let it touch. Make sure it feels like your abs and your armpits are holding the weight rather than your arms. And now keep your chin tucked away from the weight like it's a bowl of slugs and push energy out of your legs in the middle of your groin to go back. And then also push to come back up. Don't think about pulling yourself back up from that back position. You want to drive energy through the knees out of the groin to come back up straight. So let's push to go back, feeling our toes relax, our feet relax, but driving energy through our hips and then come back up tall. One more driving energy through our hips, keeping our ribs anchored, our chin down and then pushing to come back up. Let's go one more ribs anchored, chin pulling in away from the bell and push to come up and now set the bell down, hinge your hips back, relax off your toes. If this is not comfortable for you, then go into a shin box and just relax here for a second. And as you're in your shin box, this area in the front hip, just with your leg, gently from your, the back side of your hip, just push energy into the floor, keeping the knee nice and loose, making sure you're not holding tension in the knee as you try this. And just space out this area in front of your hip for a second. If you're in the shin box, switch to the other side. If you wanted to sit there, that's fine. But if we're down here, we might as well do both sides. And again, I don't want you to push it with your arm. I want you to actively push the side of your, your, front, your front leg hip. Push that gently into the ground without holding tension in the knee. And just feel that space. And if you're not sure if you feel it, do it a few times and you'll feel the space if you're doing it right. And if you don't, then reach out to me and I'll help you. All right, so we're going with a cowboy sit next. And so for this one, we're gonna do it two legs and then we're gonna do it one leg at a time. So same start up position. We want our knees pretty wide with the middle of our kneecaps touching the ground. We want our toes behind us. And we wanna just this time hinge your butt back, sit your open butt crack down onto your toes or down onto your heels and let your toes just Relax under the weight. I know this hurts, guys. Just keep relaxing the toes. Think about your posture. Ribs anchored, shoulders anchored, back of the neck long. But don't try and bend forward to get away from the pain. Just try and settle into it for five, four, three, two. And then go ahead and reach forward. Let your toes untuck. And again, if you need to, you could also go to here. I won't make you go to another shin box. If this is the position that's more comfortable for your knees on this one, just rest here for a second. We're getting ready to do one more. And so this time we're going to hold a weight. So make sure that that same weight that you just use for your kneeling lean back, you could also use your, your band, but I think I prefer a weight for this one. And, and so let's go ahead and tuck your toes back under. Get ready for your second set. Make sure you really open your butt crack as you hinge to sit back onto your toes. Anchor the ribs away from the hand, away from the slugs. And now let's pick up the weight. And now I want you to sit onto one foot as the other foot comes up and just rests right next to your other knee. We don't want it too far in front of us because all the pressure's back on that back foot. I kind of like to have it back by that knee just to support it a little bit more. Make sure you're holding the weight with your abs, not necessarily your arms and your biceps. Keep it by your chin so it doesn't drag down and cause your body to round forward. Keep relaxing that one foot because, man, I know that toe hurts. So keep just visualizing space, visualizing all that tension in the fascia, just releasing it under all that body weight, but you're so engaged through that core from the weight that it's safe to release it. And then go ahead and rest the weight down. Switch your feet. You can use the way to, to kind of hold on to to help your balance as you make that switch. And same thing, hinge your butt crack open. Make sure that your hips are in the middle of your knees and you're not sliding over to one side or the other too much. And now let's pick up that weight again. 
and just focus on holding the weight without touching the body, holding the weight with the abs, keeping the chin tucked away from the slugs, the boobs and chest pushed away from the slugs, and just keep relaxing that foot, relaxing that big toe knuckle, just trying to let the foot stretch and let the knees stay loose and wide, no pinching those legs together. Feel the length in the back of your neck, the space between your ears and your shoulder blades as you keep that bell up by your chin. And then let's go ahead and set the weight down and come back off of those toes. Either sit onto your knees or forward into that hands and knees position to let your toes untuck. And so with our final exercise, I just want to do a little bit of a bird dog. And with the bird dog, now that we've just gotten all the toe movement and all that length through our groin activated, I want to work the bird dog here. Now, here's a little bit of a challenge. For those of you who can do this, if you can't do it, then obviously this is not talking to you, but I know some of you who can. You can opt to do a beast bird dog here if you think you can challenge yourself for it. But make sure that it's the hardest thing you do well and if you can't quite lift and lengthen the leg and the arm and you're just trying to work on lifting and, and getting your balance without pinching and doing any reactionary movements, then that is fine, okay? So just uh, if you like the challenge of the beast bird dog, go for it. And so for everybody else, we're gonna get onto our hands and knees and we're gonna really apply what we got out of those last exercises by maintaining that length, driving out of our groin, opening and pushing through the middle of our knees, through the floor. We're gonna really focus on those shoulders pushing away from the ears, the chin pushing away from the floor, the shoulder blades pushing away from the floor as far as we can. So there is no tension in the wrist because we're pushing it all away from the wrist and giving it to the abs and the lats. And now let's go ahead and feel the toes tucked on the ground where we have the pads of our toes, not our toenails, really reaching and they're going to drive all the energy through our body so let's go ahead and lengthen one leg one arm and just feel that toe pushing away from the floor feel our shoulders and chin and chest pushing away from the floor lengthen through the middle of that knee but don't lift it just lengthen it and find the fist in the front hand and pull that shoulder away from it while you're still pushing everything away from the floor driving energy out of the middle of the knee, through the floor, through the groin, and then bring everything down nice and wide. And let's get ready for the other side. So before we start, make sure we push everything away. And now keep that pubic bone in the center of your body. Don't let it shift over to that bending knee. And now pull the shoulder away from that reaching fist. Lengthen that elbow as much as you can. Push energy through the middle of your groin, through the middle of your knee all the way down through your heel, pulling your toe up towards your face, pushing your chin and chest away from the floor. Keep pushing, three, two, keep that groin length, and then rest down. Give me a shin box. Take a second to assess how we did today. If you can't lift off your hand, that's okay. But if you can, just assess how much more free, hopefully the hips are moving. And just remember, if you want to do a side bridge after this, that always opens up the shin box even more. Let's go ahead and switch to the other side. Again, when you're in the position, whether your hand is down or not, give that little push into that front outer thigh to drive into the ground a little bit to open up that groin, open up the space between the pelvis and that hip. Settle in through your breath. Let your hips and abs relax. And now let's go ahead and finish with one extension. And typically I would do our extension on the floor, but today I'm gonna to do it on, the on our feet. So slowly come on up to your feet. No blood pressure rushes. Grab a little drink of water if you'd like it. And now for the standing, I want you to realize you could always do it sitting, but right now I want you to do it standing. But I want you to see, if you were going to do it sitting, we would want to be on our sits bone, sitting tall, feeling this position. Make sure you're never thinking that we're rounded back onto this, trying to extend, because that would push bend into an area we don't want. 
make sure you're kind of always wide legged and hips nice and open and sitting with a nice straight pelvis. We don't want to feel any tuck or over, over rotation. And so as we're standing now, I want you to feel your contact with the ground. I want you to feel where your feet are. I want you to feel where your body is in relation to your feet. I'd like your hip bones to be slightly in front of your ankles while you've got that nice length driving out of the middle of your groin, through the middle of your knees, all the way down through your feet. And while it's driving length all the way through the floor, I want you to feel those arches just gently lifted up so that they're not crushing any energy down into the floor where we might be bending our legs. We're just trying to drive it all the way through to keep it light in the arches. And so as the weight is in the center of your foot, make sure we're not back in our heels here. We want to just feel that our hands are going to reach out wherever they reach away from the body without feeling like they're pinched down or lifted. We just want them reaching and finding that little space between the armpit without lifting. And we want to just sit here for about 30 seconds. We're going to try this. And I want you to now reach through your middle fingers, reach through your thumb and pinkies, and reach your shoulders away from your ears as your chin tucks away from the bowl of slugs in front of you. Reach your heels through the floor while your energy still stays in the middle of your feet. Drive through the length of your groin all the way through your knees, almost flexing your quads driving all the energy away from the back of the neck and the butt bone trying to lengthen that spine as your ribs stay anchored your chin stays anchored keep reaching feel the chest opening and reaching through those middle fingers and pinkies and thumbs and let's go ahead and relax wiggle your fingers wiggle your toes roll your ankles or lift your ankles roll your wrists move your arms do a little marching with your legs and never underestimate how important some extension is in your life. All of our body is doing this all day. We're looking at computers more and more. We're driving a little less, but the computer time is now getting us into these rounded. We like to push into our workouts. So make sure that you're keeping that extension, that ability to reach and find that energy through the floor and really test your ability to find that length without energy finding itself to one spot or another. That's where you gotta feel what you're doing. So hope that was helpful for you today. I will see you next week. Have a wonderful weekend and stay dry out there.